Puma, you have that adjustability in the seat. It's well designed, it's fun to drive, much better than you get on a lot of other small SUVs. Hello everyone and welcome to the Car Code YouTube channel. My name's Sam and if you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. As you can see today, it's a rather dreary day, but I'm going to be doing a review on the Ford Puma SUV. Why you ask this car has been out for four years? The reason being is because it's one of the best small SUVs on the market and this year is Britain's best selling car with over 42,000 Pumas being sold so far this year. So it's very popular with the British public. So I'm gonna see, does it live up to being the best selling car in the UK? Let's jump in first and take it for a drive, get out of the elements and see what it's like driving. Driving it, it does feel very similar to the Fiesta, but you're just a little bit higher up. So this is the 123 brake horsepower MHEV mild hybrid. The gear shift is, is really good on it. And obviously you've got that, the hybrid kind of helps with your regen. I love a manual car. Favorite thing, especially on the Fords, they just know what to do with the manuals. You do have your different drive modes down here as well. Eco which is what I normally drive in in my car. But that's quite cool. So that makes all the dials. That's nice, I like that. And slippery. I'm just gonna leave it in eco, I think. Your visibility is quite good out of the Puma. I really love the look of the Puma. One of my favorite small SUVs. You can see it puts a smile on my face, clearly. I just think it puts the fun back into driving. It's well designed, it's fun to drive, affordable to run. It just makes a lot of sense to me. They're not hard to get hold of. I mean, I'll show you when we get back to the dealership how many they've got there, used and new as well. There's so many about, it's great. As you can see here, they've got loads of pre-regs and slash new Pumas as well. Now, one thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have like your auto hold when you stop because it's not an electronic handbrake, it's a normal handbrake. But most super mini SUVs have got a manual handbrake. So say a Rona, Volkswagen T-Cross and many more. And this is your engine straight out of the Fiesta. It's the mild hybrid. They're all mild hybrid now on the Puma. They started off having petrol or mild hybrid. This is the 125, one litre EcoBoost, and you also have the 155, one litre EcoBoost, so 153 brake horsepower. That gets 0 to 60 in nine seconds. This one is around nine and a half seconds. So that's the one that I tested today, and it's still pretty nifty but the 153 would be really good. I'd be really interested to drive that. I think that would be quite a bit of fun, really. But yeah, really good three-cylinder EcoBoost engines in all of the Pumas. And you can get it with a six-speed manual or the seven-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox. It is obviously a little bit frummier because it is a three-cylinder engine. So coming from four cylinders, you do have to get used to it a little bit, but for a three-cylinder, it's quite good. I put my foot down. You can hear the turbo kick in there, really nice. Picks up so well. And this is not even the 153 horsepower. This is just the 123. Much better than you get on a lot of other small SUVs. That's the standard engine. Nippier than what you get on the Nissan Duke. And the Nissan Duke doesn't have any options of more power engines. They just have the hybrid or the one litre. And their one litre pumps out 116 brake horsepower. The road noise has not been too bad either. It's not the most refined vehicle I've ever driven, but I'd say it's better than the say at Arona for the road noise. It actually doesn't weigh a whole lot more than a Ford Fiesta, so it's not a heavy car, but it does give you much more space than a Fiesta because the Fiesta, it's a true super mini. So having the Puma makes a lot of sense. And it also starts at less than the Ford Focus. I'd say what you do gain in the Focus is obviously you get the bigger infotainment screen and a few more mod cons if you like, but it's quite similar to the Focus anyway, as the Fiesta was. You don't feel like you're missing out a whole lot. I think the Focus has got more of a sporty drive than, than the Puma, but the Puma is, is quite good. It's quite settled on these wheels as well. These are 17 inches on the ST line, so it doesn't feel harsh at all little speed bumps like this with the 17 inch alloys 
they're absolutely fine and the ST line suspension isn't as sort of firm as I thought it would be it's perfectly suited so you get 17 inch alloy wheels on the titanium and the ST line it goes up to 18 inches on the ST line X and ST line X Vignale and also on your Vivid Ruby edition so those are likely to be a little bit more firm ride and you can actually opt for 19 inch alloy wheels which I just wouldn't bother doing from what I've heard they seem to have a bit more of a sort of firm suspension as you'd expect and maybe a little bit less comfortable than what you might want it's quite driver focused as well you feel more connected to the car than you do in the Volkswagen Group SUVs as in those the engine is a little bit quieter but also in lots of those you sit quite a bit higher up so you feel like less connected to the car as a whole now one thing that small SUVs do is be bold and the Puma definitely did that as well which I really love the look of it especially these big bulbous headlamps they look excellent and they're such a great hark back to the original Puma I'll put in a comparison picture I think it's so nice they really have got the spirit of that car back not everyone was happy with the fact that the name was reincarnated and it's now an SUV but Honestly, with the way everything's going, I think it was ingenious from Ford. I think that was very clever. You can see here, all the cladding is in body colour. So on the ST line cars, that's all body colour. So that looks quite nice. And that gives it more of a hatch look rather than SUV. And that's kind of the whole vibe. It's not a proper high riding SUV. It's more of a crossover. So it fits a lot of people's lifestyles. And on the titanium, this is all just black plastic cladding like you'd normally expect on an SUV. You do have the option tinted rear windows for 250 pounds on some models. This particular titanium model has got the option of the rear tinted windows, which are 250 pounds. I'd definitely go for that. I think the titanium is a great trim to go for, especially if you add a few different features on there. So if you add the rear tinted windows and the winter pack and the driver assist pack, I think that is a really high spec car that you've got there. It's coming in under 26,000 pounds. For the titanium obviously once you add on those options it does go up a bit the price but it is priced well in a small suv segment it comes to standard on the higher up models too it is five doors only it would be nice to see some like rear concealed door handles because obviously the original puma was a three door coupe but they've done a very good job of the body lines making it look sporty the front of the puma you do get your full led headlamps as standard which is great and they are that lovely look you can get different signature lights with different led data money lights in for over 700 pounds but i think these standard ones do the job great you've got the ford badge up here like you did on the pre-facelift fiesta and i really like the placement there we are expecting to see that move down and grow and it go into the middle of the grill for the facelift. But I do like it here, so we'll see how that looks on the facelift. For your grills, you've got this honeycomb style grill on your ST line and ST line X models, as well as the ST line Vivid Ruby edition. On the titanium, it's slightly different and you've got chrome surround on it instead. This is the front of your titanium model. As you can see, it's a little bit different. You've got the chrome surround and then a bit of chrome here as well. The grill on the ST line X Vignale, I don't like it really. It's sort of a Mercedes S grill i don't think it suits the look of the car as much as this grill i think they've done a great job with this this st line is probably the trim that most people are going to go for if you want front parking sensors on your puma you do have to opt for the parking pack which is 500 pound it gives you the rear view camera and the front and rear sensors or you can get the driver assist pack for just under a thousand pound which gives you adaptive cruise control as well as the parking pack and a few extra features as well so I definitely recommend going for the driver's assist pack. I think for what it is, it's really good. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with standard like we do see on the Volkswagen Tiggo, but it does have a lot more kit than a few other SUVs out there. So I'm not really complaining. And I think that driver's assist pack is pretty good value for money. You have a few color options on the Puma and the price depends on which trim level you go for. So on the ST Line X Vignale top of the range model, the colour options go down a bit in price because you're paying more for the car, which is quite good. Frozen white is an option and it's standard on that ST line X Vignale that I was talking about. So this is the frozen white, it's a solid colour, but it does really suit the look of the Puma. I think that looks really nice. 
My favourite colours on the Puma are the Desert Island Blue. I have to say the Desert Island Blue does suit the Puma really well. That would be one of my favourite colours, if not my favourite on the Puma. It just looks excellent. Just really sporty look. These are the 18-inch alloy wheels as well on the ST Line X and the Vivid Ruby Edition as well. And I also love the Agate Black as well, which is £525 option on most cars. In between you have a lot of other cars you have the fantastic red which doesn't look very fantastic to me and is quite expensive so that's not one for me you do also have the vivid ruby red which is exclusive to the vivid ruby edition and that's actually quite a cool color i do quite like that but my favorite color was the metropolis white on the puma which is sort of an off-white color that was a stunning color but unfortunately that got discontinued last year so you don't have the option of that anymore but next year we are going to see a facelift of the Puma so I'm really excited to see is Ford going to be a bit more experimental with the colours on the facelift hopefully so because I do like the colours on the Puma but they're not the most exciting as standard it's in blazer blue which is a free colour option it's a navy colour as you can see I'm probably quite a big fan of navy so I do quite like it although it's not metallic but for a zero cost option it's a lot nicer than a lot of what other manufacturers are giving dark greys and bright reds so let's move to alloy wheels on the ford puma and they're all the diamond court bitone look wheels which is excellent something that even premium manufacturers like audi and bmw don't even do for standards so come on keep up everyone ford's doing very well 17 inches starts off with the 17 inches on the titanium they're a really nice wheel then on the xt line it goes up to these 17 inch alloys which are lovely perfect blend of comfort and also the sporty ride it's not got loads of roll but it's nice and comfortable so i'd say 17s are the perfect wheels for this car then it goes up to 18 inches on the st line x and the vivid red ruby edition then on the st line x vignale they've got their own style wheel you can also opt for 19 inch wheels on the st lines optional extra which I don't think I'd bother going for them because the normal wheels look great anyway. I actually prefer the look of them. And also you're going to get a superior ride comfort from a normal wheel rather than the 19 inches. So there's your wheel choices across the range for the Puma. You could also get gold wheels on the ST line gold edition, which I love that. That was last year. That's discontinued now. It's a limited run. And also on the ST as well, the ST gold edition. I thought they looked so cool. You wouldn't think it would work gold wheels. You think it might look a bit tacky, but I think they look so cool. I love the look of those cars. I'm not going to go through all the ST wheels because I'm just focusing on the Puma, not the performance Puma. Another great thing on the Puma is the Ford Easy Fuel system. It's so easy to fuel up. You literally don't have to twiddle any caps. It just locks with the car and it's easy. One thing I would like it on the driver's side instead, but it's not a major issue. And there's no lever that you need to pull in the car to release it. Literally, when the car's unlocked, you just pull it. You've got a nice tab. You don't have to push it or anything. It's so easy. So really well done for the easy fuel system there. To the rear of the Puma, you have more elements that are clearly inspired from the original coupe, like these rear tail lamps that are clear, but also not. Clear tail lamps have been a huge trend recently. So this is really cool how they've done it clear, but also with the red inside. It looks so modern and it's really unique and quite different. So I love how they've done that. They've also got Puma along here. This is in chrome in the titanium and it's in the black on the ST line models. This has got the EcoBoost hybrid badge. I love what they've done with the exhaust as well on the Pumas. You've got real exhaust and they've just done, it's just very simple. They've just shaped the metal, obviously. It's very easy and just made a statement of it rather than having it hidden or pointing towards the ground. It looks really good and it has quite a nice little note to it as well. Got these reflectors but they're not too bad it looks like a really nice car whatever trim level you go for very impressed so to boot space on the puma this is the one in the showroom as sheltered from the elements boot space for the puma is excellent you've got this integrated parcel shelf which is really nice and you can just detach that as well it's like what we've seen on the new honda hrv so that's really great you've got really practical boot you've got 456 liters of boot space which is almost class leading one of the best it's really really good so it's better than the arona which gives you 400 liters it's better than the duke which gives you 422 and many other cars so it's done a really good job of the space 
underneath here you've got what Ford called the mega box which gives you even more storage and you've also got a drainage plug as well so if you get muddy boots in there whatever you can actually rinse it out see it goes right down to the ground so that's quite handy you can also get a mini space saving spare wheel that's a 200 pound option from new obviously on used you'll just have to see which one's out there that actually goes into the mega box so you don't lose that but the spare wheel goes in it and it just reduces the size and it also gets rid of that drainage plug as well so if you do think that would be a useful feature then you'd go without the spare wheel but you've got a tire inflation kit like most new cars now anyway your false floor is very practical as well you can have the higher level and you could drop it down lower as well right i'm going to take a seat in the back now and i'll show you what that's like so the back of the puma what is it like well it's clear that you're in a small suv it's not massive in here but it's not too bad you've got quite large rear windows this these ones aren't tinted so they'll be a bit different on a tinted one these seats are very comfortable the middle seat is a proper middle seat there's not many cars that do that now so lots of small suvs or just cars in general the middle seat fairly usable this one you've got the transmission tunnel so you have to put your feet on either side but you don't have to proper manser it and you don't have to proper squeeze your feet in so it's really comfortable for me you could have three adults in here pretty comfortably you've got two sets of ice fix points which are nicely hidden away as well dark headlining i thought it'd be more claustrophobic in here but we're literally under a tree in the shade and i don't feel claustrophobic and you've got nets in the back Audi would want to charge you for a storage pack for those, but no, Ford, Ford give you that. So thumbs up in the back, no charger ports at all. So that lets it down a little bit, but the back for a small SUV, I'm very impressed with it. So what is the inside of the Puma like? Well, if you've seen my Fiesta review or been in a Fiesta, it's very familiar. It's pretty much the exact same. So they just lifted it off the Fiesta and put it in to this car which is great a few other small suvs do the same thing so the volkswagen tiger uses the polo interior pretty much exactly the same so this is the same that's not a bad thing yeah there's eight inch center infotainment screen it's bang in the middle so it's not faced towards the driver which is a little annoying but because it's not massively big it's not a huge problem it's very clear and really easy to use so simplistic as well you know exactly what to do you just go onto your apps you can connect your phone navigation phone audio so easy i like that you've got the actual radio logos as well i'll show you the rear sensors as well so they just come up through there and also on here too so they're quite useful vno play sound system shame that's gone i'm excited to see the facelift though and what they do with the interior you get navigation as standard apple carplay and android auto as well you've got your climate controls here very easy to use you can get a winter pack which includes heat front seats and heated steering wheel for 350 pounds that's a really good option on some manufacturers now especially with kia and also with seat they sort of have trim levels and each trim comes with specific things whereas ford and volkswagen you kind of pick what you want just something to bear in mind it's not like if i go for this top trim i'm gonna have this necessarily this has got the dark headline it's the st line all the st line models have got that the titanium's got the light headlining we have this lovely light headlining so it's nice and bright in the car it doesn't feel too dark in here at all so that's not really an issue you can get a panoramic sunroof though for a thousand pound which is nice that you could spec it across the range you've got this alloy gear knob on this st line i really love this you've got the manual handbrake like you do on most small suvs if you're coming from a car that's got electronic handbrake it just takes a little bit getting used to but most people i find don't mind i don't mind i've got electronic handbrake on my car but manual handbrake's fine it's just stopping at lights and things like that it has auto hold coming up on the clutch but not auto hold when you stop the car so you have to put your foot on the brake or lift the handbrake up you've got a little armrest which just feels a little flimsy and it's not adjustable but it is nice that it's there so i can't complain say at road it doesn't have that there on lots of cars you've got this 12.3 inch digital dials here on this st line and then you've got the semi digitals on the titanium lumbar support on these seats is so good how you adjust it with this dial here 
It's very well adjustable. Lots of cars don't have any adjustment on the lumbar support whatsoever. Whereas the Puma, you have that adjustability in the seat. I like to have it all the way out on this one. It's really comfortable, really soft seats. The faces aren't the most comfortable of all cars, but the backs are very good and the, they hug you a little bit. The ST Line X seats are even better. These are the different seats you get in the ST Line X. They've got the leverette and then the cloth inserts as well. Quite nice, they hug you maybe a little bit more than the ST Line. And the titanium seats look really good too. We've got these all fabric seats, really comfortable. You've got a different style gear stick, but still really good. And your lever wrap steering wheel isn't the perforated sportier look on the ST Line. And I love this red stitching everywhere in the cabin. It looks really nice and sporty. Before I get absolutely drenched through, I want to say a huge thanks to Pi Motors, Ford and Kendall for making this review possible. And Dan Park, the sales manager, has been excellent and helped me do a few of my reviews. So it's been really great and I hope to do many more reviews here in the future. All of their links in the description down below. Make sure to check them out. They've got so many fumes in stock. So if you're looking for one of these, this is the right place to go. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next review.